again, everybody, and welcome to Prep Time. I'm Justin Barrientos, and I'm here at Winona Senior High School as we talk to two Windhawk athletes who participate in both football and track. We'll also check in with new Windhawk Activities Director Brad Brzezinski as he talks about his first year as an administrator here at Winona High. We'll start out today with Travion Clark. Clark is a running back in football and runs track in both relay and individual races. Clark is in his bell lap as a Windhawk athlete, and he will end his Windhawk career on the track. Clark and his Windhawk teammates started out the season in mid-season form. They traveled to the University of Minnesota for an indoor track meet on March 30th. Travion had the fastest time in the prelims in the 60-meter uh, dash, and then in the finals, he ran a little faster and ended up winning the, the event. I didn't think I would be prepared, actually, but before I got mentally prepared and I was there, and I don't know. I did a lot better than I thought I was. It was fun though. Trey's time at 6.99 uh, um, was a really good time and uh, something that I think caught the eye of a lot of people and uh, hopefully set him up for uh, what's the beginning of a, of a great season. It's pretty much just all speed with him. It's like it's, his first burst is like the fastest in the state. It's like no one could ever beat him out the blocks. It's one of the most amazing things ever to see. One of my favorite stories about Trey is how he got started. You know, Trey, uh, when he was in middle school, he wasn't out for the track team, but he just came to cheer, you know, one of his good friends, Eric, on, and he'd run across the infield. And our, our middle school coach at the time, Jed Reister, said, you know, you're pretty fast. You want to you know, think about coming off for track? And, you know, he's, he did, and it's true, he's pretty fast. <laughs> Eric was, we were both in seventh grade, and I didn't want to do track because I felt like there was going to be too much running. And it was actually here in the back there. Um, we had a track meet. And well, Eric had to track me and he was running and as he was running, I was running next to him. I found myself running next to him. And after that, it was pretty much fate. Like the track coach came up to me the next day at school and he talked to me about joining track and eventually I did. Clark has gone on to have a great career in track. Last year was his breakout season, which included a trip to state and a school record. He, he made it to state, uh, the meet in the 200 is the open event. And then also uh, we had two relays call for the 4x1 and the 4x2. And in the open 200, which was one of the last events of the prelims that day on Friday, uh, you know, a lot of people up there at Hamlet at the track, and we thought we had a pretty good angle at watching the event. And he, he got off to his sort of classic good start, and he was off early. And we thought, you know, for a while, from my perspective, I thought, oh, okay, he either won the heat or he came in, in second. And his time ended up 22:21, uh, which was a school record. And he ended up uh, three hundredths of a second out of making it into the finals. So. Uh, it was a great run. Uh, like I said, set the school record faster than anybody in, in one of the senior high schools ever run and uh, just close enough to keep him hungry for this year about getting into finals. Clark is also a college recruited football player as well. That's even more impressive when you learn that he didn't play football as a sophomore. Freshman year, uh, I was probably, I wasn't even five feet tall and <laughs> I probably weighed like a total of 110 pounds. So I just pretty much spent the sophomore year dancing and pretty much working out. And he always just kept saying, Coach, I'm, I'm just too small, I'm going to get hurt. And, and we uh, just said, no, you're not. You, you know, you're a quick kid. You know, no one ever gets a clean hit on him. Um, so we just said, you know, you'll be fine. And he kind of, nah, I really don't want to do it. And then, you know, after that track season, he was like, gosh, I should really come back. You know, so I think the biggest uh, the biggest disadvantage for him was the start of his junior year. My junior season was all right for me. I was kind of in and I didn't expect to be in because I thought I was pretty much going to be sent out because of Eric. And um, they got me up to speed. I wasn't really mentally prepared because I wasn't really fully into football at that time. I didn't even really like football until I got to my senior year, in the junior year type thing. And I just pretty much did it because a lot of people kind of wanted me to do it. And Coming in the junior year, I wasn't really expecting to ever really play anyway, so I wasn't really fully there. I mean, I did okay, but I didn't do as good as I did when I had Eric for support on the sidelines and everything. I mean, I don't know, it was just a tough year for me. It was a tough year. You know, we had Eric go down, but Trey hadn't played for a year, and so he was learning everything over again, you know. So uh, I think that's where you saw it the most on him was that the difference between that was uh, as a junior, he was still learning so much of the offense and he really wasn't sure where to go. And then as a senior, you know, he had played the year before, worked hard in the summer, and, and had learned a lot from Eric and his other teammates. It's amazing. It's the things that he does, it's like I could never do it. I really couldn't. Like he broke it was a game the game against Century. It's like he's running and 
he's falling backwards and he hits, he bounces off of somebody and he keeps going and like, there's like five people holding on to him and somehow he gets out of it. And just, I mean, the speed that he has, I wish I had it. Cause I'm not, I'm really not even that close to him. It's, it's outstanding what he can do on a football field with, with his size and speed. Just based on his athleticism and his, his speed, he was able to, uh, to, to really cause a lot of headaches for some defenses. Uh, you know, he's a, he's a small kid, uh, but he makes uh, great moves. He's quick laterally, and he goes zero to 100 in you know, 0.2 seconds. So, um, you know, that's a big thing for him is that quickness. He's also able to hide behind the offensive lineman because of that, that size, you know, uh, and all of a sudden he would kind of dart out of a little hole that wasn't there. So, you know, knowing where things were going with his size, he was kind of able to hide. Run, run fast, that's pretty much it. Run fast and use your use your height to your advantage, as in stay low underneath your um your blockers, whoever's blocking for you. So what is next for Travion, both in track and in his future after Winona Senior High School? Probably break my own record, a uh, couple records. I probably wanna I wanna break. I feel like we're gonna break the four by two record, and I'm getting a hunch for the 400 record. I'll see what I can do on that on that part. But and then I wanna go to state. And this year, last year I was more. Like, I don't know, I was more happy to go to just to go to state. I felt like that was accomplishment enough, but now I'm actually going to fully compete. I'm gonna be there. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna try to win state this year. I'm trying to, I'm going for the gold this year. I'd love to see him cut, break a couple more records. And uh, you know, I think it would be only fitting that he end and then that group end on the podium when we get to the state check meet again. You know, it's a, you gotta work hard to get there, but when we're there, uh, I think that's one of the things that I think they've all set in, into the sights is, okay, last year we got there and, and we sort of figured out what the lay of the land was. Now this year, let's go back and let's go back with the opportunity to, to be on the podium and give us a chance to win, win a state title. Travion, I see him maybe actually winning the 200 at state. Cause I mean, Pretty much there's one person that he really has to worry about. That's the person who won state last year. So otherwise, otherwise I see him winning. I think, uh, you know, the sky's the limit for him. Uh, he's so quick out of the blocks and he, he runs, runs the corner extremely well. Uh, you know, I think both the relays that he's on, will have an opportunity to break him. I think he, you know, he could have a legit shot at, at the 100 or the 200 as well. Uh, you know, he's going to have to run well. He's going to have to have some competition to, you know, push him along and pull him along. But, uh, you know, I think if, if he sets his mind to it, I think he's got a great opportunity. Uh, law enforcement, actually, would be a police officer. It's just, it's just it's about the respect that you get. And I feel like you're doing your duty as, like not, like, not only as a human being, but as a citizen to protect other people. That's what I like about being in law enforcement. That's what I'm going to do. You know, he's got a huge heart. He really does. He's got a big heart. He, he really gives a lot of himself to all the activities in. You know, it's, it goes back to what I told you initially. It's the, his, our first meeting was with him cheering on his friends. And, and, you know, he'll get more excited sometimes about some of his friends and some of the things that are going on there as much as he does about some of the things that he does himself. And, uh, yeah, I think that he will have a life of uh, selfless kind of service to other people. And uh, that really, uh, you know, as much as he does on the, on the, on the track and, and all the accomplishments he has, uh, those things I think he earned greater than, than what he accomplishes on the track. You know, I think he's very electric uh, on the track and obviously in football too. So uh, I think no matter which of the areas he chooses, I think he's going to be pretty successful. Uh, you know, I think he, he's got the right mindset and he, he wants it. I think once he gets onto a campus and, you know, those coaches kind of get him focused and keep working on the things that he needs to work on and pushing himself and practice every single day. I mean, that's really, you know, if you can, if you can say, hey, you can take some of your athletic ability and, and turn that into and education and, and eventually a, you know, a career down the road, that's, that's, a, that's a nice opportunity. Travion Clark says that his father was a big influence on him in choosing criminal justice as a degree to pursue in college. Coming up here on Prep Time, we'll take a look at Clark's teammate in football and track, Eric Berth. That's coming up here on Prep Time. And welcome back to Prep Time. Now we'll set our sights on Eric Berth, who is also a running back in football and also runs track in individual and relay races. But despite what you heard from Eric in the last segment, he is very fast, as his coaches explain. Until people actually played against us, some people didn't think Eric could take the ball to the house. And then all of a sudden they would see the speed and see, wow, this kid hits the edge, he can be gone. So that was kind of fun to see. It was just feeding off each other and had a great time. And I think anytime you're having fun, 
it's a lot, lot more enjoyable to go to practice and games and everybody else feeds off that as well. Don't get him wrong. I, I'm sure that every time those two go out and race each other, he's out there to try to beat him. You know, there's not, uh, you know, he, he might say some things that say, you know, uh, Trey, and, and no, he's out there to try to beat him. They kind of feed off each other. They're kind of, you know, different types of backs. Eric's a, a big back, but he's got speed too. Travion's kind of the jitterbug. You know, everyone hears, you know, thunder and lightning. That's the term you know, used by the Giants. And a lot of people kind of said the same thing with us. We hang out all the time. It's the, it's the chemistry that we get with each other. And we get used to being around each other. And it kind of carries on to the field so that you want to protect each other more. And it's a lot of sentimental stuff. It helps a lot, actually, because I know his weaknesses. And it's like, he helps him a lot more running, like, against him in track. Like, me and him, like, since we've been together for so long, it's like we push each other throughout everything to help each other get better. So it's running with him, it helps me a lot. You know, he's a bigger kid, and Travion obviously is a little bit smaller. So Eric takes a little while to get going, you know. Uh, you put those guys in a race, and Travion probably wins 8 out of 10. Um, so, you know, I think Eric understands that. He understands his strength. Uh, he's competitive. So, you know, if you can get the baton to him in first, probably going to stay in first because he doesn't like to lose. So I think they're, they're actually a good blend. They understand each other and they're okay with their teammate, you know, being better than them possibly in certain things. And that's kind of the way it is. You know, they're competing uh, week in and week out on track and pushing each other and they're pulling some of those young, other young kids along and making them better as well. Berth decided to try out track, not because of a friend's interest, but because of family. I ran track actually because of my brother. And like, it really it started off because like we're in gym and like, um, gym in seventh grade and we were running around the um, gym to warm up and it was me and Trey and we were running like we were chasing after each other and the coach looked at me he was like yeah you should think about going on going off a track so I was like okay and then my brother was on the track team so that made it all much like better like I guess that made me want to go out a lot more so and plus I want to like running with him like I run with him for two years in track so that I mean, I really wanted to do that too, so, and I really wanted to beat him in a race. Even though Eric Berth is a great track athlete, his favorite sport is football. I guess, like, I moved from Chicago to Winona, and, I mean, I was always interested there, but we never had a football team in our school. So I guess, like, I've always been interested in playing football, and it just, it just kind of sort of just came to me. Berth was set to have a breakout season his junior year, but his junior season lasted just one game. Well, we had graduated a lot of seniors the year before, I guess that year the only thing we knew for sure is what we had in the tailback and that you know hopefully he could carry some of the load for us and, and allow those kids that you know were juniors and seniors uh, the time to mature, learn the offense and understand what it was to play you know in the big nine consistently and so when we lost him it was like oh boy where are we going to go. Uh, we didn't have any other tailbacks that were really ready you know we had graduated a couple kids you know Anthony Inman was gone so uh, we were kind of kind of uh, searching for an identity because we kind of lost the identity of our team really early, you know, after seven carries. So that, that was a pretty big blow, I think, uh, to the coaches, you know, to him, I think his teammates, because they knew he was uh, kind of the catalyst of that offense and everything was going to kind of focus on him and revolve around him. So it was a pretty big blow. Just that injury, it just, uh, God, it just threw the whole season off. It was... It was hard for me sitting there watching my team go one and eight and me knowing that I could do something about it, but not really physically being able to do something about it. It's like, it was, it was grueling for me. I'm running with the ball. My fullback, he hits like, he hits the player that um, actually tackles me, hurts me. He hits him and like, he lets the guy go. And I guess like the, the guy dove and he landed on my ankle and it just like the ankle just, the pressure of him landing on it just kind of went in and it's just it downhill from there. I felt cracks. I mean, I screamed. I remember that vividly, so that was, that was a lot of pain. Things went from bad to worse as Berth's recovery from injury was stalled when he tried to come back too soon. You know, I had him in class. Uh, you know, not only did I have him in the football field, but I had him in class at the same time. And so he was actually rehabbing in my class every single day. Um, you know, and he was pushing himself hard. He was doing a lot of things, uh, you know, because they had told him, you know, maybe six weeks, so you might be able to be back for that last uh, section or that last last regular season game into sections and so that was his goal you know because that's what they told him you know possibility um, everything looked good he was out doing some things moving around whatever and uh, he had one more test basically to pass uh, they went in and took another x-ray and they had saw that uh, there was a slight shift in the procedure they did so they said no you're done and for him that was a huge blow it was like the day before our uh, 
our last regular season game. And so for him, it was like, oh my gosh, here we go. Um, and then they're like, we'll do surgery tomorrow. So he actually wasn't even at our last game because they did surgery on that day. It took a lot of work, actually. Like, it took me probably six months, three surgeries to get back from that. It, I mean, there was therapy. There was just learning how to run again, learning how to jump again. It was, it was a lot of work, but I guess like the doctor, the therapist, my coach, they always pushed me to be better and get the work done, so it helped a lot. One of the things that's impressed me the most out of Eric, you know, Eric, people didn't realize this last year, you know, he came off that football injury in, in track season, so a lot of what he did in track was to recover from that injury. And uh, he stayed the course, you know, he continued to work, and I, I was really proud of him and his work ethic throughout that year last year. What are Eric's goals and hopes for his future? My goal is this year, it's probably to break the school 100 dash record and going to state once again, and then winning conference, defending my championship with conference and then winning sections. Cause last year I, it was, it was not that good last year. I would finish eighth place last year. So I want to finish a lot better than that. You know, he's defending big nine champion uh, in the hundred meter dash and I'd love to see him come back and defend that title and uh, you know, be a leader on our four by one and our four by two and qualify for state and get to the you know, the podium and all those things. You know, it's like uh, right now, uh, it's about dreaming. It's about, and then it's about going out and getting it. So that's where we're at. I'm going to go major in um, physical education and coaching, and I'm playing football for Winona State. So I want to do something that I'm comfortable with and that it's actually going to be fun for me. And we hope to follow Eric Burt's football career as he continues at Winona State University. Coming up here on Prep Time, we will check in with Windhawk Activities Director Brad Brzezinski. That's coming up right after this. This season, Winona Senior High Athletics started out the year with their third different athletic director in the past three years. Mark Winter stepped down from the job in 2011. Clark Jones then took over for 2012 but resigned this summer. Then, 1999, Winona Senior High School graduate Brad Brzezinski took over the reins of the job, and he talks about how he's doing in his first year at the helm of Windhawk Athletics. As an activities director now, it's certainly been an adjustment to learn some of the Know, technical aspects of the job but the advantages that I had I knew all the people I knew all the places I I knew that as you know this issue may come up at least I knew who the person was to, to touch base with and try and you know solve that problem so I, I think it would be really difficult I don't envy people that that step into a, a position as an athletic director activities director in a community that they don't know people that they don't know, facilities that they don't know. I mean, that's a big thing too is, you know, especially right now as we're, as we're dealing with, you know, some uh, less than cooperative spring weather, it's like, okay, so what's plan B? What's plan C? If, if this doesn't work out, what else can we do instead? And to be familiar with the community and the, the facilities is certainly a, a, a big advantage there. I think he's doing a great job. Um, you know, he's done a nice job of communicating. I think he does a good job of if he doesn't understand or has a question, I think he asks, you know, because he wasn't the head football coach. So sometimes there's things that, that, you know, the head football coach or the head baseball coach took care of that he didn't know for sure. So, you know, he's always good at asking the question about, okay, how do we do this? How was this done in the past? Does this work for you if we do it this way? So I think he's, he's good because he's asking questions and he's gaining knowledge from us and using, you know, each of the coaches to their abilities and what they've done and, and really tried to make it an easy transition. Brad Brzezinski is, a, is great. I've really enjoyed the time that we've had to get to know each other over the last year, and he's a real staple in that in that community and has been for a while, you know, as a, a coach, as a coach, and as a teacher as well too. So that's been really great, and we're we're th we're 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 thankful for that partnership. We're just we're really uh, really glad that he's in that role of activities director, and and uh, he's doing a great job. And and from all the reports that that I hear anecdotally from other coaches and and other people that he comes in contact with, uh, that he's right on top of things. Well, I, I guess I've been going in the direction of school administration for the last few years. I, I, I kind of knew that was a, a, I knew I wasn't gonna remain in the classroom necessarily for the, you know, for the duration of my career. I've kind of been on this path for the last, oh, I'd say probably four or five years. I've kind of had it in mind that um, I would eventually move into some, some sort of uh, different role still within the, uh, within the realm of education, but some other, um, some other role. So. You know, when the activities director position opened up, I think it gives me a, a good opportunity to utilize some of the some of the strengths that I have and some of the knowledge that I have. Again, I've, I've got a, a background in, in uh, 
um, a variety of athletics and um, I think I have some of the qualities that it takes to do well in this job. Organization is probably number one. Um, just y y you end up managing a lot of different things in a given day. I mean, you, you, you know, you might spend five minutes on this and ten minutes on that and, and it's just, you know, you, you rarely sit down and spend, you know, an hour on something. It's usually just kind of all these, all these little things that come up during the day and, and, and just trying to keep all those balls in the air. You know, in that position, now you take a spring like we're having here with all the uh, the activities that have to be rescheduled. You know, you you really have to be on top of it. And and besides that, there's just the everyday uh, the scheduling of things for the next year, and, and that continually going on. And and the little things that uh, that don't go right that that he has to deal with, where maybe a student gets in trouble or a student doesn't have the funds to to partake in the activity, and or a parent's got a complaint about their their child's not playing enough or you know, he's got to deal with that stuff too, so he's got a lot of plates spinning and, and he's able to keep those things organized. Brzezinski says that one of the things that has helped him in his first year on the job are the relationships that he has with current Windhawk student athletes. At least right now, when I go out in the halls, I still know the vast majority of the kids pretty well because I have taught a lot of them, I have coached a lot of them. My fear is more of what about three or four years down the road when I've been out of the classroom, when I've been out of coaching for four years, say, am I going to know as many kids as well? No, probably not. He, he was a teacher at the high school, so I, I was certainly aware of uh, Brad. And, and I also knew that uh, from anecdotal uh, uh, conversations that he was a very good teacher, very organized, uh, very skilled, uh, very articulate, uh, well liked by his students, well respected by them, and, and, and certainly well liked and respected by his fellow uh, teaching colleagues at the high school. I think it, it helps you a lot. Uh, I think he's got a little rapport with some of the kids because he, he's taught them or he's had them in class or he's coached them. So I think that really helps that, that early on transition of I get it, I know where you're coming from, I've had you in class, I understand who you are. Uh, I just think that it helps a lot with that early, early beginning as an athletic director. Brzezinski is also helped by the fact that he played three different sports while a student at Winona Senior High School. And he had highs and lows as a Windhawk, especially in his favorite sport. Football was probably uh, kind of my, my, my number one sport in terms of interest in, in high school. Um, it, it was a sport that as a junior, we went 0-9. I mean, we really struggled. You know, it was, we had a lot of, we had a lot of younger kids playing and we just, we got out there and, and, and got it handed to us pretty good most weeks. Um, our senior year, we actually went five and four. Not a terribly impressive record, but from where we'd come from, boy, we felt pretty darn good about that. You know, we, we felt like we'd really kind of uh, turned the corner there. Football was probably uh, the sport that uh, I, I guess ultimately ended up being my favorite. Baseball is the one that I I played the most of, and you know, had been playing since I, you know, could 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 barely walk. Um, but you know, I've got some real good memories there too of, of playing with Ona High baseball, playing some of the summer baseball programs coming up through the, you know, the Goodview traveling program, and playing VFW buddies and playing for the Legion and and, and all that. It's um, some neat memories and, and and some relationships that I still. Uh, you know, hold very closely today. So how is Brzezinski doing as the activities director? You know, Brad's also a Winona guy. He, uh, he brings to the, to the uh, position there that he has now uh, this, this understanding a little bit of what's, what Winona Athletics is all about and what Winona activities are about and certainly has, a, I think, a deeper allegiance to uh, not only the, the uh, schools in Winona but also to the community and surrounding area. And that sometimes you don't get when you, uh, you bring somebody in from outside, somebody that uh, um, they come there for a job and, and rather than a career. And I think that Brad has, has certainly made the commitment to Winona and the, and the community and, and loves it here and wants to stay here. And, and uh, you know, when, when you have that sort of an attitude, you know, you, and, and somebody that's very organized and, and uh, respected like he is, I mean, you've got a winning combination there as a, as a, uh, as a human being and as a professional. You know, he's uh, very organized, uh, you know, um, he always knew kind of where he was at. Very mild-mannered, uh, pretty even-keeled type of guy, uh, pretty consistent. Uh, didn't get too excited or too low about anything. Always kind of that workman type, uh, you know, character to him. Brad, uh, just he's a, he's a really complete package when it comes to uh, administrator and an activities director, 
uh, a community member and certainly a, a member of our administrative team that you know, I value his input uh, very much. Well, that's all the prep time that we have for you today. I'm Justin Variantos. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time.